In this video I want to go over using Vigeli's speed controller. This is good for adjusting the speed of linear actuators and it can give 16 different speed settings. Inside you'll find a user manual and then also the speed controller unit itself. For this tutorial I'm also going to be using a 12 volt battery. You can use a 12 volt AC to DC converter. Um, I'm using a classic linear actuator, but any t of our 12 volt linear actuators is also fine to use. And then I'm using a rocker switch with the wiring harness attached. Uh, we've made a separate tutorial on how to use the rocker switch and how to create this wiring harness that I'll link down below if you want to go check that out before watching this video. A few important comments is that this speed controller is only good for controlling the speed of one actuator at a time. If you connect two or more linear actuators to this speed controller, you can potentially damage this unit, so we do not recommend it. Looking at the side of the control board, we'll see that there are six terminal blocks here, four dip switches, and then two jumper pins. The first two screw terminals are for connecting up the actuator itself. The second two terminals are for connecting to the 12 volt power supply. Now you can set the speed either using these four dip switches to program the speed or instead of using the dip switches you can use the last two pins here to set the speed using an external voltage. If you do this you'll need to program this control board using the two jumper pins. The one on the left is called jumper pin 1 and the one on the right is jumper pin 2. If you have a look at the circuit diagram here, you'll see that jumper pin 1 is for setting the external voltage range. So that's the voltage that will be supplied to the last two pins here. You can either set it to 12 volts by leaving the jumper pin connected or if you remove it, you can program it to accept 5 volts in there. The second jumper pin on the right is used for telling the controller whether to program the speed using the dip switches or from the external voltage when you have wires connected to these last two terminal blocks. If you leave the jumper pin on the right connected, then the speed will be set manually by these dip switches and then if you remove the jumper pin, the speed will be set by the external voltage connected to these last two terminal pins. I'm going to go ahead and reconnect this because initially we want to focus on manually setting the speed with the four dip switches but I'll come back later and go over how to use an external voltage input. Since we're manually setting the speed with the dip switches we don't need to worry about the jumper pin on the left because we're not taking an external voltage through these last two pins here. So we'll just ignore it for now. I'll go ahead and wire everything up as per the diagram. So I've gone ahead and made all the connections. You can see the actuator is connected to the rightmost pins and then we've got the 12 volt power supply coming in the middle two pins. At the moment I have all the dip switches set to the up state. When we take a look at the user manual you'll notice that when all four switches are in the up state or one then we're using the maximum speed. If however we set them all to zero that's going to be the minimum speed and it's not going to move at all. According to this table, we can program it to any speed that we want and it will have a linear relationship. So here in the up state, we're moving at the maximum speed. Now if I go ahead and lower all these switches down so that they're all facing downwards, and I go ahead and use the switch, you'll notice that it doesn't move at all. Then according to the table, if I set the first switch to the up state and the remaining of the switches remaining off, it'll be at the slowest possible speed. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. And it's almost impossible to notice on the camera, 
but uh, it, it is moving very slowly. I can feel it going in my hand. But uh, so it's a little more visible, I'm going to go ahead and change it. So let's do a couple more switches up. So that's the first two switches in the up state, the last two switches in the down state. And I'm not sure if you can hear, see that moving, but you should be able to hear the motor spinning. So yeah, that's slowly retracting down. So hopefully you've noticed that that's still moving down slowly. And so forth. We can keep playing around with the different switches until we find the speed that we like it moving at. You can see now that we're moving a little bit faster that we have the first three switches in the up state and the last switch in the down state. And last but not least, the maximum speed. There we go. Let's say that instead of using these manual switches, you want to control the speed by some external source. This could be a potentiometer such as this one, or it could be a microcontroller or PLC. As mentioned earlier, we're going to want to remove this second jumper pin, the one on the right. That's going to tell this control board that we're no longer using the dip switches and that it should take the speed from these two input blocks here. I'm going to leave the leftmost pin connected because we're still going to be using a 12 volt external voltage supply, but if you wanted to use a 5 volt uh, external supply then you would remove this. I'm now going to wire everything up as per the diagram shown here. Now that everything's been attached I can adjust the speed just by rotating this knob here and then pressing the button. So at the moment I've got it fully closed off, so when I click the button, it's not moving at all. But if I increase it slightly, you can see it start to move, and then we can adjust the speed of that by rotating the knob in either direction. Now what you could also do is remove this potentiometer and connect it up to an Arduino or a PLC, some sort of microcontroller, and then you can write software to vary the speed.